Hey everyone, Brett Kelly here for another Tuesday Tech Tip. Uh, this week we're going to continue on with the same theme of last week. We're going to talk about OpenCast, um, in particular the uh, different caching methods. So the inspiration from this was a YouTube comment on our last video asked, uh, Chilled Pepperami asked, um, does OpenCast accelerate reads as well too, kind of like a ZFS L2 arc, or is it just writes? So uh, I guess uh, too long didn't read, or I guess too long didn't watch, the answer is yes, it does. But uh, why don't you come on with me um, and we'll explore each of the six caching methods that OpenCast allows. All right, so OpenCast allows for six different caching um, methods. Write through, write back, write around, write invalidate, write only, and pass through. So uh, let's go through each one and I'll give you a little bit of a description on what they do. All right, so before we start, let's just get a definition out of the way. Um, there's a core device and a cache device. The core device is the spinning hard drive, the cache device is the MVME device. So as I go through these, I'm gonna talk about core and cache. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, so the first method, write through. When an application writes to the uh, open cache device, it writes to both the cache device and the core device, and the application doesn't see that write as complete until both acknowledge. Therefore, you get the write speed of your backing core device, but you can guarantee that your write also got placed in the cache. This will accelerate your reads. So, to answer the question, write through would be a read acceleration, it would not be a write acceleration. Okay, so method two, write back. Write back will, an application will commit a write, it'll get accepted at the ca by the cache, immediately acknowledge that right, and then slowly over time, or not slowly, but eventually over time, periodically, flush those rights back to the core. So as you can see, this will accelerate both writes and it'll accelerate reads, as in the application sees a direct write into the cache device. Um, for those familiar with hardware RAID and the battery-backed uh, cache on those, it functions essentially the exact same way. Um, like I said, it will accelerate reads and writes with the caveat of where it's flushing to the core device later, if that cache device did happen to fail before um, what was ingested in it got flushed back to the core, you could experience data loss. But that's kind of the trade-off of having really fast uh, write, write uh, acceleration. All right, so the third method, uh, write around caching. Um, very similar to write through. When a write comes in from an application, it gets committed to both the cache and the core device. However, only if that data is already um, in the cache. So if you're updating or something, it'll update it in the cache as well. If it's not, it'll only go into the core device. So like write-through, it only will accelerate reads, but what this does better than write-through is since it doesn't put everything automatically in your cache as well, you avoid some unnecessary cache pollution if you're writing some data that probably won't be reread back out again. All right, so number four, caching method, write invalidate. So very, again, very similar to write through and write around. It writes to the core, and if the data's in the cache, it marks that data is invalid, returns the acknowledge back to the application. Um, the point of this method is to reduce the evictions from the cache should the file not be read uh, right after. All right, so number five, uh, write only caching. Write only is just like write back. Uh, remember, write back writes to the cache and then periodically flushes to the core later. So write back, very similar, except reads will never ever get promoted to the cache afterwards. So it truly only ever is a write cache. So uh, if, you, if, if you're really, really, really needing to only speed up writes and you don't want reads to fill your, uh, fill your cache device up, that's, this is the method you'd want to use. All right, so the sixth and final caching method in open cache is called pass through. Pass-throughs, um, what it does is it allows uh, the application to bypass the cache directly and write only to the core device. You might be wondering what the point of that is, but that's almost more of, almost advanced, or for someone who's building applications or something on top of an open cache device, say, and they want to be able to turn caching on and off with a switch without having to change the underlying path, you can still write to the cache device, but by turning it to pass-through, it'll bypass completely, or say you want to turn it back on, you can just change the mode. So that's what pass-through could be used for. So that's it. That's the six methods of caching that OpenCast will allow. 
um, so to circle back and answer your question directly, uh, to best simulate the read acceleration that an L2ARC can allow, um, I would recommend right through or probably even right around so you don't pollute your cache with too much writes. Um, yeah, so that's it. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Hope you learned something and uh, can't wait to catch you guys next week.